people say, Carol, it must take you hours to keep your garden looking so good. Well, a storm has just been through, 10 days, rain, wind, and look at it, nothing, <laughs> virtually no damage. Just plants growing as they do in a summer weather and a bit of rain. So this is about how I planned and what I did to make sure that my garden is always low maintenance. So have a look at what I've got to show you. You will be inspired by how to plan your garden so it's always low maintenance. See you shortly. You might think that after a 10 days of rain and wind on a garden like mine that it would be completely wrecked. Well here we are, we're going to take a look and see what happened to my, my plants and how I planned it so that I wouldn't hopefully have to do too much maintenance. So as you can look around here you'll see that things are pretty tidy, nothing's fallen over, there's no rubbish all over the place and things are looking really ship shape. Let's have a look at a few more of those plants. I know my lawn and here's my citrus area. This is my dwarf citrus, a weeping orange, a lime and a mandarin still struggling to decide what its future is but we'll get there. These are dwarf plants and they have had virtually no buffeting in the wind compared to the ones beyond it which are larger, taller and more willowy kind of plants which have been really moving a lot in the, in the wind. Still are doing that a little. This is a weeping cherry. It should be fruity but it hasn't yet given me fruit. It needs another year or two. And this is the reason why it has been moving so much. I didn't get round to tighten up those straps holding the trunk steady. Prevailing wind comes from here, moves across the section and really buffets from side to side that whole tree. That weakens the root system and stresses the tree. So the taller they are and the skinnier they are, the less happy they are. Look, it's really starting to blow again. And you can see that these trees are moving around a lot compared to my more compact dwarf trees which are basically sitting there saying oh, okay a little bit of wind no problem these are uh, um, my crab apple trees one is ornamental and this is ready to be picked and made into crab apple jelly mm -mm. so it looks like something i need to do before the birds will get into it and you can see down here they've had a go but before those beaks start to hit it, I've got a job to do. Crab apple jelly coming up, folks. This is a dwarf peach. And that's been very snugly um, hiding in there. It's nice and comfortable. Hasn't been buffeted around at all. Walking down here to my other apple trees. These are dwarf columnar apples. In other words, they have their, <laughs> they have their fruit ridiculously close to the, to the branch to the stem there which means that as a tree they're not susceptible to losing all their fruit as it buffets around at the end on the end of a branch which might be swaying out here you don't get that damage of the fruit with these nice columnar apples my blueberry bushes I have uh, staked these they're on a little bit of a lean, so the wind has been getting at them, but I do need to do something to them because they uh, they need a bit more support. I need to put these, uh, they are actually tomato cage trellises, but yeah, there it goes. I need to get those and uh, do an, a better support system. It's starting to grow over the margins that I'm happy about to keep my garden intact but I think what I need to do is put some wooden stakes around nice four wooden stakes and wrap it around with some string so that it is better supported
There's another smaller uh, blueberry which has ha been well supported with these good strong wire hoops. Trouble has been so well supported the birds have found it before I did and uh, we'll need to cover that to stop the birds getting in. Another thing that I did in the spring I found some of these really strong wire hoops for each single bloom. I noticed last year that my gladioli which have just finished and been wrecked by the 10 day storm event they um, were starting to flop over and I didn't know I hadn't grown them before and I didn't know how much support they needed so these have been perfect last year they had just flopped completely all over the lawn and I <laughs> had a really messy garden after a little bit of rain and I've also put these this is the end of its flowering life the hollyhock but that has kept it upright and I find bamboo moves all the time and that that's it's okay at the beginning but it's floppy it's flexible and in fact they steel wire supports seem to be a whole lot more effective grow food in a vertical manner and this is my method of doing it first of all is a sucini or courgette the yellow one why do you have a yellow one carol well i've learnt over the years that green courgettes get lost in all the foliage when they go rampant and it's not until a long time after they should have been picked that you find them with the yellow one you can see them <laughs> and you can pick them before they before they start to really take off which i will do here i have runner beans which have been swaying around in that high wind i was a little concerned that they would snap off but they seem to be very resilient and so even they have loved the wind and the warmth and they have a crop of beans for my dinner tonight looking all around here do you see anything that's lying around on the lawn that shouldn't be ah, nothing <laughs> do you see any plants that have flopped over in crisis point none so this goes to show that if you plant nice dwarf plants plant them closely choose the right kind of supports you can continue to have a garden which is low maintenance even though in theory it should be an absolute wreck so there you have it just walking around your garden and observing things and taking action before anything gets out of control is a really good way to keep your garden low, low maintenance finding something that will support the plants in some really bad weather that's how i've sorted it out and you can too you know it's not that difficult just need to look walk around think it's not rocket science it's just a matter of using your eyes so that you can observe and think and take action before it gets out of control and you'll have this non-storm damaged garden after the storm that we we've had to here in Rotorua New Zealand it's possible you can do it subscribe like and check out my next few videos on how to manage a low maintenance garden easily see you there